In a world of so many chat apps that offer 99.5% privacy at best, there's a huge demand for a 100% private method of communicating. And SimpleXChat is the app that's trying to meet that demand with some interesting techniques to avoid collecting user data and to avoid producing and leaking metadata. So we know that the most popular encrypted chat apps require phone numbers for registration. And sometimes that phone number can also be used for syncing contacts and finding people within the app. Now that's a convenient feature for most users, but if the messaging service were to get hacked or receive a data request from the feds, then your phone number would fall into that threat actor's hands. And unless you used a burner phone for registration and you practice good OPSEC with said burner phone, that phone number can very easily be traced back to your real life identity. Now, one way that some private messengers get around the phone number problem is with user IDs that might get set automatically when you register, like some kind of random number that's assigned to your account, or having usernames that the end user can set themselves. That's actually a feature that Signal added earlier this year so that you can get in touch with people on the Signal app without having to give them your personal phone number. But there's still a few problems with the user ID approach. If people are making up their own usernames, they have to be very careful not to pick one that can be tied back to their real life identity. A lot of the time, people choose things like their pet's name, favorite sports team, or a real life nickname for their online accounts. And that same name is probably connected to Facebook accounts, Xbox Live, Gmail, and several other services that are much less private than these encrypted chat apps. And even with random identifiers like session IDs in the session app, those can be traced across different groups that you join within session, or the session ID would be seen by people when they DM you, like undercover agents trying to get you to slip up and dox yourself. And even if you don't slip up when that sexy FBI agent slides into your DMs, they can still infer a lot about you just by tracking your user ID across different groups in the app. Let's say you're first seen in a group that talks about anime and another one that talks about playing poker, and finally, a group about leatherworking. There's probably not a whole lot of people in the world with that cross section of interest, especially not in your time zone, which can be inferred by when you're active on the app. So hopefully you get the point now how usernames can be dangerous and they require a little bit of extra OPSEC precaution on the user's end. Now with simple X chat, in order to communicate with people, you usually end up creating these chat room links that SimpleX chat calls contacts, and then you have to share that contact link with the person that you want to communicate with. So real quick, I'm gonna show you what that looks like in the SimpleX desktop app, along with some other features of the app. In the main window here, you can see that I'm in a CubesOS group chat or an unofficial CubesOS group chat. There's a lot of different tech and privacy related group chats on SimpleX that can be found very easily in the SimpleX directory. So this lists a lot of different public groups on SimpleX. You can find a link to this directly on SimpleX's website. And then to join this group chat along with any other group chat or direct chat, you would just paste this up here in the SimpleX uh, where it says search or paste SimpleX link. Or if you're on mobile, you can scan QR codes like you see right here. All right, so uh, if you wanted to set up a direct message with someone, there's a couple different ways to do that. Let's look at the temporary chats first. So go down here to this pencil icon and you have this option here to add contacts. So we click on that. And again, it gives us a QR code, very easy to scan if you're on mobile, or you have this link that you can just click here to copy. Now, if you look down here, the uh, incognito option, I had it checked. This'll just be whatever the last option you used was. Um, I think the first one by default it is not used, but anyway, when incognito is not checked, you see this message that your profile Alice will be shared. 
So if I go up here to my profile setting, you can see it says Alice. This is like a display name in Telegram. So you can change it to whatever you want. You can change it whenever you want. You know, multiple people can be named Alice. Um, but if we go into to create this um, temporary link, and it's temporary because every time you go in here, the link uh, changes. So, you know, if you saw the QR code before and after, it's, it's different now. So um, if you click this box to be incognito, it says that a new random profile is gonna be shared. So I'll show you what that looks like. I'm just gonna send this to myself on my phone real quick. All right, I'm using my current profile on my phone. So on my phone, you'll, well, the other connection you see is gonna have their real display name, and then Alice is gonna have an incognito one. So Bruce connected. And if we go in here, this is the profile name that Bruce would see, or if this was a group chat that I joined incognito, this is what everyone in the group chat would see, kaleidoscope height. So basically it just takes two random words. I don't think it uses numbers or, more than two words, at least I, don't, I haven't seen one with more than two words, and just puts them together. So this way, it's obviously very difficult to track people across Simple X. Like if you're using these random profile names, you could have, and temporary links, you can have 10 different connections that you're sending out to people. The links are all gonna be different and your name is gonna be different in here. Uh, so it's gonna be very difficult for all those people to even know that they're talking to you. Secret X Chat also has an option to create long-term contact links. These are what you would probably want to create and share on a personal blog or possibly in your Twitter bio if you wanted people to get in contact with you on Simple X Chat. So you can create one in your user settings by going to your Simple X address and clicking Create Simple X Address. And then you can share this automatically with people that you've contacted on the app already. And here you can see that some of the options are different. Auto accept is not checked by default. And this is probably to prevent spam and a bunch of unsolicited messages. Um, Cause again, this is something that might be posted on your Twitter or somewhere else. And you might not want a whole lot of people just hitting you up. So if you send a message to someone or if you send that link to somebody and they click on it, it's gonna give you a notification that you have a contact request and then you have to click on that. And you can accept it or you can accept it incognito, which just like the temporary links, if you accept it incognito and go in here, you'll see that there's a, um, there's a new name, a new random profile name, internal primary uh, that's created. And then that'll also be different for every single person that tries to make a contact with you via that long-term link. And if you do end up getting spammed a lot and just your link is getting too many contact notifications, you can just delete it whenever you want. And you can always go and create a new one and then this will be a totally new link. So there really aren't any long-term identifiers or there's not any permanent identifiers at least in Simple X Chat. There really isn't any way if you're using proper OPSEC with all other regards and if you're using incognito profiles for somebody to track you across this app. Really great for privacy, but the potential downside to this approach is like it says here, until you create that address and share it with someone, there isn't really any way for them to find you and message you on the platform. So the user experience is completely different than all of the mainstream chat apps. Now, what's even more interesting to me than SimpleX chat itself is the SimpleX network that the chat app is built upon. And I think there's a couple of other things like maybe a file transfer or a um, file sharing application that's built upon it. But anyway, I'm just gonna go over the basics of the SimpleX network. So if we go into a chat and we scroll down here to the network status, you can see that we're receiving messages via this server and sending them via this one. So the SimpleX network is unidirectional. Messages only flow one way from different servers. And if we take a look at these server addresses, 
we can see that they're onion links. So when you send messages on Simple X Chat, this is the default for the latest version of the app, you're basically doing two hop onion routing that is unidirectional, where, or at least the servers themselves send messages unidirectionally. And there's also an additional layer of encryption that sits in between these servers, the sending and the destination relay that prevent them from knowing which message queue the messages are being sent to. And you can also run your own servers and use those in SimpleX if you don't trust the ones that they automatically assign to you. And the way that these servers are negotiated is each person chooses the server that they want to receive on. So this server uh, receiving via is being chosen by Alice and then sending via is uh, being chosen by Bruce. So this really even prevents end users from knowing each other's IP address and, and being able to track each other that way or try to trick them into using a server that's poisoned, you know, like one that Bruce controls since he can run his own servers here on the network. And of course, SimpleX is open source. That's the most important feature for any private messaging app because that allows you to actually verify these security claims or allows one of your programming buddies to verify the security claims for you. And as you can see here, SimpleX Chat's end-to-end -end encryption uses post-quantum key exchange alongside traditional encryption, similar to what Signal does. And this app has local database encryption that it prompts you to secure with a password when you set up the app, which is very important to do, very important to use a good password there because your contacts, groups, all the messages and media that you receive in contacts and groups are stored locally on your device, not on any of SimpleX chat servers. So SimpleX chat really is on another level when it comes to privacy. The biggest issue that the app has to overcome, in my opinion, right now is the lack of users and content, which I suspect is due to the increased complexity in the user experience with having to create a contact and send that link to someone in order to initialize a DM. Um, and because of the increased complexity and the fact that it's probably the most private chat app out there right now, I don't think it's a surprise that most of these groups, which are really just the top like 10 or so groups that I was able to find in the SimpleX directory are about privacy and technology. Uh, I haven't run into any knitting groups or baking circles or anything like that, but it would be nice. It'd be nice to have, I guess, some more, uh, you know, normal non-tech related discussions, like old school social media-esque discussions taking place here on SimpleX chat. But I really think these groups here are a huge opportunity for SimpleX Chat to grow its popularity. Because if we take a look at this comparison of different encrypted messaging apps and their features, we can see here that the maximum number of participants in group chats is pretty lackluster for the majority of apps here. I would say that Signal kind of sits in the middle with a maximum group of a thousand people. Um, but even that is pretty small if you think about it. I mean, if you're organizing a very large event uh, or if you're running like a blog within Signal or a news group, something like that, a thousand users as your limit is probably not going to be enough for you. Now, Telegram is generally what I think of as the big daddy group, encrypted group app, even though it's not end-to-end -end encrypted like Signal, but they have maximum group sizes of 200,000. And the groups on Telegram is a big reason why it became so popular because there's groups for pretty much every type of subject on Telegram. And with SimpleX chat, they have no limitation and they already had the advantages over Telegram of not requiring a phone number and not or, or at least anonymizing your IP address because SimpleX Chat doesn't know what your IP address is. You're doing onion routing to send messages by default. And just a couple of weeks ago, the Telegram CEO got arrested in France because they weren't complying with data requests 
And that was enough to get Telegram to kind of change their behavior towards that. If you read their updated terms of service, they now will comply with data requests and send the government your phone number and your IP address. In SimpleX, there's no phone number and no IP address to be sent. And there's also no limit on group chats, although like it says, performance here is unknown. I would suspect that if a very large active group is created or multiple ones are created, and there's not enough SimpleX servers to support that, that it would start to slow down the application. So try out SimpleX if you enjoyed what you saw here. Like and share this video to hack the algorithm and buy some of my merch from my website, based.win, if you want to help support my work. 10% discount at checkout for paying in Monero XMR. Have a great rest of your day.